Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the third episode of the Shahrul Ramadan series. In this series, we will be discussing some beautiful personality traits that are taught by the holy month of Ramadan that are also very important qualities of the soldiers of Imam Zaman alayhi salam. So, let us take full benefit of this beautiful month and embark together on a journey of establishing these noble personality traits within ourselves this Shahrul Ramadan, insha'Allah. Before we begin, I would like to offer my condolences on the death anniversary of Lady Khadija alayha, the most beloved wife of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his progeny. In today's episode, we will be discussing the quality of having a profound thirst for knowledge for the soldiers of Imam Zaman alayhi salam, and we will be discussing the concept of media literacy. An important trait of the soldiers of Imam Zaman alayhi salam and the defining feature of the Ja'fari school of thought is that they have a profound thirst for knowledge. Of course, we have a hadith explaining the importance of gaining knowledge in the religion of Islam. Rasulullah says, Seek knowledge even if you have to go to China. In another hadith, he says, Seeking knowledge is obligatory on every Muslim man and woman. And in another hadith, he says, Seek knowledge from cradle to grave. So in the religion of Islam, knowledge can be divided into two categories, the worldly knowledge and the Islamic knowledge. Let's discuss both of these one by one. Without a doubt, one of the greatest features that separates the Imams of Al-Muhammad from other scholars is the vast legacy of knowledge that they have left behind. Whether it be Islamic theology, jurisprudence and law, or it be sciences like medicine, physics, mathematics, astronomy, etc. Or in fact, it be humanities like literature, philosophy, Greek ethics and law. The Imams of Al Muhammad have taught all of it. We know that Imam Ja'far al Sadiq established the Hawza Ilmiya in Medina, where he taught between 4,000 to 12,000 students. And from where his students emerged as either various scholars of Islamic jurisprudence like Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik bin Anas, and so on, or as famous scientists, mathematicians, physicists, chemists, doctors, etc. For example, one of the most famous students of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq is Jabir ibn Hayyan, who is known as the father of chemistry till today. Jabir ibn Hayyan learned chemistry from Imam Sadiq You would find that Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq taught scientific theories of Greek scholars like Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and Ptolemy, etc. And by the way, he taught all of this long before the works of the Greek scientists were you know, translated into Arabic and thus brought into Arabia. So Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq was teaching these theories long before the Arabs had even studied them or in fact even knew about them. Which is not really astonishing for us to be honest because we know that the pure progeny of Rasulullah that pure bloodline has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge of this holy household of Rasulullah comes straight from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq would not only teach the works of these Greek scholars but he would also point out mistakes and inaccuracies within them and then correct them. For example, he corrected the theory of Ptolemy that claimed that the earth is at the center of the universe and the sun and the stars revolve around it. Imam Sadiq rejected and negated that theory and taught that the earth and the planets revolve around the sun and that the skies are in constant motion. We have wonderful lectures of Imam Sadiq uh, preserved and recorded in history that talk about scientific facts that have just been proven recently in the 20th century. For example, we have his lessons on matter and antimatter. He taught about the multiverses. He taught about the perpetual motion of the particles and atoms. He taught that the universe is constantly contracting and expanding. He even taught Jabir bin Hayyan that the stars and the heavenly bodies are in perpetual motion and that is what creates their gravitational force that keeps them up in space. And this is just scratching the tip of the iceberg because Imam al-Sadiq has left a treasury of scientific knowledge. When our Imam al-Zaman is the grandson of this wonderful man and he is the inheritor of this divine knowledge, it is absolutely obligatory upon all of his soldiers and followers to have a profound thirst for knowledge. And we know that when Imam al-Zaman returns and establishes his kingdom, there will be a place and a need for experts in all of these different fields of knowledge in order to create a well-functioning society. 
Now let's move on to the second category, Islamic knowledge. Ayatollah Kazim Qizwini writes, that the worth of knowledge is in its benefit to humanity. The kind of knowledge which has greater benefit for humanity carries more prestige. And it is clear that in the life of the human, the highest obligation is to gain knowledge, the ma'rifah of the creator of the world, and to have faith in him. Therefore, the knowledge of Tawheed and the religion of Islam is the most important, prestigious, and valuable knowledge. He thus concludes that the best of all forms of knowledge and the one most wajib to acquire is Islamic knowledge, which every Muslim should have and should spend his life learning. It is important to state here that knowledge of Islamic teachings is only partially learned through memorization and it is fully learned when it becomes evident in our actions. My dear brothers and sisters, it is incumbent upon each and every one of us to spend our lives learning and practicing the knowledge of Islam. Now we don't all have to become scholars, but it is obligatory upon us all to be constantly learning from the scholars and to be constantly working hard to becoming better and stronger Muslims, inshallah. Now, an important topic that I wanted to discuss here is media literacy. Media literacy means being able to differentiate between real and false news and between correct and incorrect information gained from the media. Now, if you take out the media bit here, this is also not a present-day concept, but a concept that was taught by Imam Sadiq as well. We have a hadith from him where he talks about the importance of learning knowledge from correct sources and from good and righteous teachers. He also taught ilm al-rijal for the same purpose, which is the knowledge of differentiating between strong and weak narrators of hadith, so that we can differentiate true and mustanad hadith from fabricated ones. So ilm al-rajal is basically media literacy in terms of narrators of our hadith. In our day and age, when the easiest source of knowledge available to us is to Google something, it is extremely important that we are able to distinguish between reliable websites, web pages and articles, and those that are fabricated and were created with the sole purpose of leading us astray. Therefore, it is very important to do our research and learn which websites are reliable, verified and recommended by the scholars and to be media literate, lest we fall in the trap of the Tawut. I will leave links to some websites that have been verified by the scholars down in the description, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for watching this episode. Do tune in for the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.